Hi, this is Marci from UXP. In this short tutorial, I want to show you how to create perfect, responsive web design navigation. We are inside of UXP application. Let me start with turning on, uh, turning on the, the grid, which will help us design uh, a nice uh, website. Now I'm setting on the responsive breakpoint and I'm starting with a large screen resolution of uh, 1224 pixels. Right, the grid is ready and we have the first breakpoint. I will be focusing on the structure so I will use the Twitter bootstrap and we have uh, in, inside of UXP we have a large library of Twitter bootstrap elements. I, I will use uh, this kind of elements to make it quick to create a low fidelity prototype for you to present how to uh, form the navigation. So I just added the navigation element, couple of adjustments. I'm using the search to quickly add elements to the screen. So I'm adding some text uh, that will be a, like a placeholder for logo. That's not really that important, but it's a nice to have thing uh, on your low fidelity prototype. Okay, and something to uh, complicate a little bit the design, um, login and create an account links that will be part of our navigation uh, component. Okay, great, we are ready with our navigation uh, component and now let's just add some content uh, to have a complete uh, design to work on. UXP is a fully advanced design tool and right now I'm using the auto distribute feature to align all the components so it looks kind of clean and nice. Okay, we are ready uh, with the large screen, large, resolu large screen resolution option. Right now, let's um, go down. I will add another breakpoint this time for 1024 pixels. This is a landscape iPad, for example, resolution. So it's kind of important. As you can see, after adding that, uh, UXP automatically copied all, all, the, elements, all the elements from the uh, larger resolution. And now I can see how to adjust them. Uh, to create decent experience. So I'm just shrinking a little bit uh, the navigation component and I still have enough space to make it uh, totally usable and easy to navigate. Right, as you can see, the navigation is fully operative and the content fits the screen. We are all done with this resolution. Now I'm adding the 768 and I'm copying from this iPad landscape view. So I'm copying all the elements, or rather UXP is making that for me automatically. So let's see how it looks for the iPad resolution. As you can see, uh, again, I can sense how to adjust things on the screen. Uh, my solution for this resolution, again, will be to shrink the navigation pattern. I don't think any fancy solution is needed at this point. Uh, pretty often I see designers uh, hiding the navigation links without any reason for iPad, um, uh, for iPad design. And I honestly, I think this is a huge mistake. Uh, with just a simple 
uh, shrinking the navigation, making it significantly smaller, we can still have a clear, clear pattern and clear design for iPad users. I'm just adjusting the content right now to fit the screen nicely. As you can see in UXP, that's an easy task. Uh, my elements are based on groups. Groups are fully editable. And we have this column that I moved down uh, below all the content from the left side. And uh, just an idea what we can do with that. I can just move the content a little bit and it will look nice, fit the screen and uh, hopefully it will be uh, fully readable uh, as a representative of the final content. So again, this is a low fidelity prototype. Uh, this is um, a design that I'm making to demonstrate to you some solution when it comes to responsive web design. Great, and finally, I'm adding the 320 iPhone resolution uh, and I'm copying all the elements again uh, hopefully you've seen the change in the in the select I've changed all the elements um, to be copied from the iPod resolution it just makes things easier for me and as you can see I cannot really fit this kind of navigation really easily um, on the iPhone screen or on any mobile uh, mobile phone smartphone screen so I just decided to delete that and create a different solution. But let's start firstly with the login and uh, create an account option. So I can assume, and it's supposed to be tested, that my users would be interested in logging in from mobile devices. So I don't want to hide these links from them. Uh, I want to provide an easy access to these crucial, crucial options in the interface. So I just decided to put that uh, in the top of the whole application. And now, let's deal with the navigation that I just deleted, right? So I'm using the pattern that is very popular among responsive web designers, uh, responsive web designs, and among mobile applications. So I'm just adding a small button. Right, and now I will need to find an icon that will um, trigger the right mental model for my users. The most popular thing as, um, that I know is from iOS, so I'm just adding this list button to indicate that this is the menu. Right, and before I will be done with the navigation, let's just uh, play a little bit with the content and adjust that to the screen size. Okay, I'm done with the content and now let's deal with the navigation. So first of all, I'm creating a group from the button and the icon. And right now I will add a box, so I'm using the search to do that quickly, which will be my drop-down menu. So as you could probably figure out, I'm going to create a um, drop-down with the links that will pl uh, play the role of a hidden navigation pattern for the smallest resolution. I'm just adding links, that's fairly easy, and uh, to make it more exciting, we'll create an interactive navigation. So, for example, if you want to present this design to your stakeholders or your teammates, you could easily show how the navigation is supposed to work. So, you experience a fully capable design solution with interactive prototyping and with responsive prototyping and we were actually first to introduce uh, responsive prototyping quite a while ago. And right now I'm adding interactions so I need to set names for, for two elements that will be interactive and I'm choosing the toggle visibility for many. So whenever you click the button uh, you will either show or hide 
uh, the menu in the application. So we are all ready. Um, so we we have the navigation pattern that is just great for this kind of design, and we have several breakpoints to present uh, the changes in the navigation. Let's see the preview of that. Okay, so starting with the 320 pixels version, we have interactive menu that's uh, hidden. Uh, and the rest of the designs are really conservative because you must remember when you are designing a resp responsive website you are obliged to serve users not you are not obliged to create a fancy solution so uh, pretty often it's better to create a simple navigation that will be easy to to use than to create a fancy pattern to show up in front of the other designers <laughs>